everybody, welcome back to Cotto Verdi. My name's Annette and today's a super exciting day because we are finally replanting this patio bed here. We're giving it a full revamp. So I'm going to show you where it's situated in the garden and then explain what we're doing and why we're doing it. So this bed here is the corridor bed that we replanted in a previous video earlier on in January. And this is where the two Desdemona standard roses are. And it's the corridor bed because we have a whole glazed corridor here next to it. This is the eucalyptus bed because we have a eucalyptus hedge there to give us some screening and privacy and make the patio feel more enclosed. And as you can see, this is our seating area. It's currently covered to protect it from the rain. And then this is the bed that we're doing today. So this whole length here is being completely replanted, apart from the trees, which are going to stay. The reason that we're replanting this bed here is because it's quite a tricky bed. So this top bed here gets full sun all day long. And the lower bit gets some shading from that top bed. So even though it should really be in full sun it actually only gets morning sun and then by the afternoon unless it's midsummer and the sun is fully overhead it's actually shaded and it's shaded in the latter part of the day by things in this area that shades it also so this bed was originally planted with loads of summer flowering perennials and annuals. So I planted it up with loads of snapdragons and clarkia and celosia and things like that. But the main plants in this area are um, a stilby because I thought they'd like the shade, but actually they're just a little bit too short. And then I also have some gorgeous astrantia, uh, some of which I may decide to keep, but they're not currently in the planting scheme and I'll explain why. There are also some gorgeous geraniums. There have been a couple of peonies in here. And my favorite plants in this bed are the veronicastrum, which are absolutely gorgeous. I particularly like the white ones because they're really tall spires and they just give the bed some structure. So what we're going to do is we're going to dig up most of these plants and then I'll explain which plants I'm putting in the bed afterwards. So this corner of the bed gets quite a lot of shade because I've got a really gorgeous viburnum here and it really is beautiful but it's completely evergreen so this patch here gets a lot of shade but it also gets morning sun. So over the years this patch here has been uh, snapdragons there's an astilbe in the corner here but you can see how tall it gets from the leftover plumes from last year so it's not tall enough so I feel like the astilbes need to come out. We also had a load of verbascum here that we dug up and planted in the far bed down there by the wood store. And we did that in a previous video. So the verbascum is already out of here. And then we have things like astrantia. Um, there's some penstemon here, which is gorgeous. There's a tiny peony here that really hasn't done much. I just don't think it gets enough sun. And then we have some lovely white geraniums, some more of my favorite penstemon here which is called Stapleford Gem. And then at the back here, we've got some Veronicastrum. And then I'll move down the bed. So moving down the bed here, um, there are some of last year's leftover snaps. This is Verbena bonariensis, um, which I haven't cut back. We haven't cut anything back because I knew that we were going to redo this bed. So again, we've got some more Veronicastrum and geraniums and things like that. And then there's a big patch of Astrantia here and some more Verbena bonariensis that's self-seeded over there. There are a few more geraniums and then there are lots of baby foxgloves that self-seed and we're going to be pulling all of those out. So the colour scheme that I'm going for in this bed now, rather than having so much pink, um, I'm thinking more along the lines of white and blue. I kind of want cooler colours and I've tried to choose um, plants that are really going to appreciate the afternoon shade that this bed gets. Um, and also as these trees go, we've got some holm oaks, three holm oaks planted in this bed. As they get larger over the years, they're just going to create more shade, which is not a bad thing, but I want to make sure that the plants I'm putting in now are going to appreciate um, all this environment. So we're going to get on with digging this bed out now 
now and then I'm going to place the plants and tell you all about what I've chosen and how we're going to plant them and then I'll show you the finished result. Well Richard has done an incredible job of digging this bed over so it's been weeded we've saved the plants that are going back in here and we've saved the other plants um, to put in other flower beds. Um, I'm not binning anything except for the self-seeded foxgloves because I don't necessarily want the purple that always comes back. So now I'm going to place the plants um, where they're going to be situated and I'm going to talk you through what I've chosen and I'm so excited. I have visions of this flower bed um, through the season just looking really wonderful and so much more interesting than it was before and just more restful because it's going to be well spaced and better planned. This is a gorgeous white geranium that we've dug up from this flower bed and we're going to divide it so that we can put more of it along the front here and it will make a lovely mound of white. So in order to divide it you just shove your spade in, give it a good chop. We could divide that even more if we wanted to. It's possible to divide it into as many different pieces as you want because um, as long as you know you've got a bit of base and some shoots you can just keep dividing it. So I've decided I want three and we're going to chop that one so it's got a good bit of crown on it on both sides it's got a good bit of crown and some shoots and so we're just able to plant that wherever we want and in all honesty we can just keep dividing but I think three good pieces there is going to work for me. Well, setting everything out was quite a feat. So what I've done is this end of the patio is an exact opposite of that end. So we've got these three holm oaks. So that's the centre and then it's a pattern either side. So that's like a mirror opposite of this end. So what I'm going to do is go through all the things that I've planted in this area and it will be exactly the same but a mirror opposite on the other end where Richard has started planting. One of the plants I'm incredibly excited about is this plant here and that is a hydrangea and it's a paniculata called Skyfall and it's going to grow to 1.2 meters so I think that's maybe four foot um, by 70 centimeters. So in fact this is quite a compact dwarf variety. It likes as with all hydrangeas full sun or part shade and it's going to flower between June and October but the special thing about this particular hydrangea is that it's going to have masses of hyacinth like blooms in a creamy white and they apparently create one of the largest conical flower heads of all hydrangeas and so I'm incredibly excited to have one of these in the middle. Now it's quite a small plant at the moment that's only a two litre pot but as with all hydrangeas if it's happy it will grow quite quickly and you know in fact I only want it to get to its full height of 1.2 meters so it's kind of going to be double the height of the back sleepers I should think by the time it's grown to its full height and not desperately wide because I don't really want anything that's going to fall over onto the patio. So then one of the other things at the back is on either side of the hydrangea I've got a veronicastrum called veronicastrum alba which is just a white version as opposed to the purple version and there's one on either side of the hydrangea there and they grow to 1.2 meters tall as well um, by 70 wide and they like full sun but actually I have found that the veronicastrum does quite well in this bed um, because I've had it here for a while and uh, we just chopped a really big clump of it into four and so I've been able to put two here and then two on the other bit up there and the reason I like this Veronicastrum is twofold first of all it's got this gorgeous sculptural foliage and it doesn't flop at all it stands really upright and then it has these tall flower spikes and they look good 
even when they're not in flower. So they look good, you know, when they've gone over and finished flowering and in fact look incredible in dried flower arrangements. So I quite often dry them. So they will be in flower and they will be white um, between June and August. Excuse the filthy patio. We have to jet wash it and clean it, but this is what happens in the winter um, because it gets a lot of shade and runoff from my pots. This pot's looking particularly cute at the moment with little white flowers coming out. But in each corner here, there I've got a Hypericum, which is a St. John's wort. And so it's going to have the usual gorgeous yellow flowers. Um, it's semi evergreen. And as long as it's protected, it will be semi evergreen. I think it's gonna be really happy here. And again, I've got one well, right up behind Richard in the far corner over there, which he's probably planted already. So the special thing about this Hypericum um, is that it's going to have white berries and I'm super excited about that. And I just think that it's going to continue the white theme. I didn't really want red berries. Sorry, the birds are making a real racket. I'm not sure why. <laughs> The yellow flowers of the Hypericum will be out between July and October and then it's followed by the white berries after that. So between July and October I'm going to have a combination of whites, blues and a little bit of yellow in this bed. So the next thing that I've got planted um, are these three pots here and these are a salvia called Salvia Nemorosa caradonna. So Salvia caradonna is also called Balkan Clary and is hardy down to H7 so everywhere throughout the UK uh, anything in fact more than minus 20 it's hardy to so although they look like nothing now they're just sleeping salvias <laughs> these are going to form a compact mound here each plant will form a little compact mound oh it grows to 50 by 30 which is why I've planted them quite close because I want it to be sort of one full mound and the foliage is aromatic as with all salvias so on top of the foliage there'll be purpley black stems with violet blue flowers between June and October and I think the blue here with the whites around it I mean it's really deep blue and then the yellow flowers over here I think it's just going to look so gorgeous and be quite cooling now the problem with this salvia caradonna is I really wanted some more here in the middle but I only ordered six so I need to grab myself another three to put here because I do sort of want a rhythm a continuous a, a sort of a rhythm going along so then the other thing that I've got in this space here um, we've got there are three geraniums and these are a white geranium I'm not sure which one they're probably just geranium alba I don't think they were anything particularly special but what I did again was uh, we had a really large clump um, that I'd previously divided and put into this flower bed and now what we did was we have divided this clump that we had here into three and so I've got three here and then three more down here from another clump and I've sort of made like an arching mound so hopefully that will be a nice mound of greenery that will have white flowers and I think that's going to look super pretty and then just behind these pots here there are three tiny little plug plants and those little plug plants um, just arrived this morning in fact just in time and they are a pulmonium or Jacob's Ladder this one's called Purple Rain and it'll grow to 60 by 30 um, it's good in shade it likes moist soil but it doesn't like to sit in wet and again it's another clump forming perennial the mounds on this pulmonium are going to be purpley black foliage that fades to green as it matures and it's going to have gorgeous soft bluey purple phlox like flowers that are about an inch across it self seeds readily apparently so I'm looking forward to being able to have loads more of that in this flower bed and in fact in other flower beds and pulmonium make really great cut flowers um, and but you must keep deadheading it if you want it to continue flowering so the pulmonium is going to be in flower between May and August so sort of in four more corners over here and then over here behind the hypericum I've got these little roots that look like nothing. Again, these just arrived this morning. So that tiny little root over there is called Anchusa Loden Royalist, and it's a bug loss. And it's going to grow to 90 centimeters tall uh, by 60 wide. So Anchusa's got gorgeous lance-shaped leaves, and this one's got some hairy stems that hold these intense deep blue flowers. They're quite small flowers, but the stems are um, branching. So there are like lots of flowers on the top and it's going to flower between May and July 
it's hardy down to minus 10 degrees so that's absolutely fine for this bed and the best thing about it is it doesn't need staking so again it's something that I'm not going to have to worry about drooping over everything else or onto the flower beds. And then these mounds here on either side of the central tree are one of my favourite flowers which is a penstemon called Stapleford Gem and I've just been propagating that throughout my garden and I've got some in the corridor bed opposite over in this direction and so it'd be nice to have sort of a continuation in this flower bed here. So again what we did was we divided one clump into two and I've placed one on either side and these have got these gorgeous electric blue flowers. I think it's absolutely stunning. I really, really love it. I've left the foliage on because we might get some more frost and it does protect the plant and I don't want to lose this penstemon. The only annoying thing about the penstemon is that it needs to be staked. And then just over here, there are three little roots. These also arrived this morning. <laughs> Loads of things arrived this morning in a, in a delivery I had. These three roots here are a poppy called Patty's Plum. Um, I think everybody knows Patty's Plum. It's this gorgeous just sort of deep mauvey with purple spots or stri strips inside. Anyway, it's absolutely gorgeous and it grows quite tall. So I think it's going to be perfect at that position. In fact, the reason I popped it there behind the pulmonium is because it grows taller than the pulmonium. Just over here behind the hydrangea, I've put seven foxgloves and these foxgloves are called Apricot Beauty. So they've kind of got a soft pink tinge to it but obviously they've also got this apricot colour and they're really sort of pastel-y and I think they're going to just pop quite well amongst the other colours that I've got in this flower bed. And then all the way along the back, dotted around in sort of swathes, we're going to replant the self-seeded Verbena bonariensis because that self-seeds so freely in my garden. I always have absolute loads of it and I think it just looks magical in the summer with the sunlight shining through it and it's just this sort of wafty haze of purple at the back and I think it looks so pretty I can't do without it. So I think I've gone through all the plants. Now none of these are particularly difficult to plant. The only thing I'd say with um, any plants that have just arrived um, from any orders is to make sure that they're really well watered. So we've got a yellow weather warning for tonight which means it's going to pour with rain so I don't think we're going to have any problems on the watering front. But that's it for today we have finished our revamp of this flower bed I couldn't be more delighted and it didn't take nearly as long as we thought and in fact I was really worried that the ground was going to be super soggy and disgusting but actually it wasn't too bad and I think we got off lightly. Anyway I really hope that you've enjoyed this video if you have do give it a like and if you want to see more videos like this then subscribe to my channel I post three times a week and I would love to entertain you. Anyway, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all next time.